Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so this week I thought I'd make something cute and romantic. Well, creepy cute and gothic counts, doesn't it? If you've just found me, welcome aboard. My name's Jo, I'm a full-time doll artist based on a narrowboat in Wales. A lot of Valentine-themed dolls tend to be dressed all in red or pink, but I feel like going for something a little bit darker. So I've picked out some purple cotton for the dress with some black tulle and lace. I've made the head, body and hands from quilting cotton in a pale porcelain shade and I've got some purple and white striped cotton for the arms and legs. I'm stuffing all the pieces with some polyester fibre and jointing the limbs with some metal beads. This doll is based off my 19cm template so all the pieces are quite small. I get asked quite a lot if I'm going to release a pattern for my dolls. I would like to release a pattern at some point, though I'm constantly making adjustments and changing how I do things. So if and when I do, it won't be the same pattern I use for my current work. If you would like to see a simplified beginner friendly doll pattern though, please do let me know in the comments. This size of template is still quite new, so I'm still perfecting the shape and making changes with each doll I make. This time I narrowed the arms and legs quite a bit and made some minor alterations to the head and torso. The biggest change I've made for this doll is the shape of the hands. When I've made a 19cm doll before, I've made a simple oval shape for the hands, but I wanted to make more of a mitten shape for this one, similar to the larger dolls I make. My sewing machine struggled a little bit with the tight turns, but I think they came out pretty well. I'm attaching the head to the body with a button joint. One button goes on the back where it'll be hidden by the dress, the other button goes on top of the head. When the thread is pulled tight between them, it creates a strong neck joint. The head will tilt left and right, but the tension holds quite steady, so the head won't fall to the side or anything. I'm using Gutterman top stitch thread for all the jointing. Any strong upholstery thread should do the job, but Gutterman have the best range of colours I've found. It's worth buying a set of doll needles too. I mostly use the 9cm doll needle, but they usually come in a pack of different sizes, so if you're making larger dolls, you'll probably need the longer needles. Links to the tools I'm using will be down in the description. Before I sew the legs onto the body, I want to paint some shoes on. I'm using some black acrylic paint with a bit of fabric medium mixed in. I'm keeping these quite simple. I don't think they need any detail, I just think adding shoes makes the doll feel a bit more finished. I'll give those a quick blast with the hairdryer, then I'll leave them to finish off drying while I start working on the face. I'm shading around the eye area with Derwent Chromaflow pencils. I use the first coat to get the basic shape and position right. I don't use any sort of guide or template for this bit, I just take my time and keep shading until it looks right. Once I've got them more or less symmetrical, I start building up layers of pigment and working it into the fabric with a blending pencil. I'm using black and purple to get a dark smudgy effect that'll come out around the edges of the buttons. The blending pencil helps to smooth out the edges and stop the outline looking too harsh. That will need a couple of coats of fixative spray, so while that dries I'll sew the legs on. These just need a stitch at each side to hold them in place. I want to allow for some movement so they don't need to be too tight. A mistake I see a lot of beginners making is to attach the legs directly to the bottom of the torso in line with the seam. This can make the doll look very flat and you have problems if you want to sit them down. The legs need to be attached towards the front of the body so the bottom can sit flat on a surface with the legs out in front. That fixative is dry now, so I can do some more work on the face. I've chosen some 15mm dark grey coat buttons for the eyes. I position them in the centre of the shaded area and stitch them through to the back of the head so they sit nice and tight to the face. Again, I'm using Gutterman top stitch thread and a 9cm doll needle. A 
A pair of hemostats or forceps make it a lot easier to pull that needle through. Before I do any more work on the face, I want to make a start on the clothing. I've made some simple underwear from a piece of lace and a bodice from purple quilting cotton with some black lace trim around the top. This is going to be fixed permanently in place, so I'm ladder stitching it up the back. Then the arms will be attached over the top later on. I've always made fixed clothing for my dolls. When I started I had absolutely no confidence in my sewing skills, so I kept it as simple as possible. I have developed it a little bit over the years, but I do want to work on dressmaking this year. I really want to learn how to make interchangeable doll clothes. That's going to be quite a learning curve, but I think it'll be fun. So drop me a comment below if you'd like to see me make some videos about that. I'm giving her some gothic eyeliner with Derwent line maker pens. I usually just add a few swirly lines to frame the face, but I thought I'd give this one a cute little heart on the cheek too. I'm adding some violet and a lighter pinky purple to the heart and to the mouth to make them pop and blending those with a burnisher pencil. If you're enjoying watching this little one take shape, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know. You can also subscribe if you like so you don't miss the next one. That'll need another coat of fixative, then I'll finish the dress. I want to give her a full lacy tutu, so I'm cutting some strips of tulle and lace fabric. I loop the strips around a length of ribbon and ta-da! I just love how simple and effective this method is. This could be left as a removable skirt, but for this doll I'm going to stitch it in place so it stays put. The arms are jointed by stitching through those beads at the top. I hide the knot under the bodice at the back, pass the thread through one shoulder, through the bead, then right through the body to the other shoulder. I normally go through each bead twice, but this doll is so small, I think one stitch is plenty to hold them in place. I fasten the thread off with a couple of stitches under the back of the dress, then she just needs hair. I am using some super chunky acrylic yarn for the hair, which I'm going to needle felt in place. I need to avoid felting over these stitches, so I take a couple of strands of yarn, fold it in half, I'll felt along the top, above the stitches, then felt another line below them.
Once that's holding firmly to the head, I'll add more strands of hair and keep felting in rows until most of the head is covered. You can do this with a single felting needle, but I prefer working with a clover pen style tool, which holds up to three needles at a time. Working with three needles adds a lot more stability so they don't break as easily and the yarn felts in a lot quicker. Once I get to the top of the head I start unravelling the yarn. I pull out the loose fibres then I can use those to fill in the rest of the scalp. I'm using a few strands of purple yarn at the front. She's going to have a side parting with the hair clipped to the side, so I'm felting this in with two needles to get a straight line. That needs unravelling and tidying up a little, then I'll find something cute to finish it off. This little enamelled heart bead is perfect as a hair clip. I've made her a beaded necklace with a little heart charm and she's ready to find her valentine. I've named this little one Aura Heartbound. If you like this little goth girl, here's another one I think you're going to love. Go watch that one now and I'll see you next time. Bye!